Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, and thanks so much for tuning in to Pods of the Multiverse Season 2, this our penultimate episode. My name is Scala, I will be portraying the world of Ravnica, and with me are my three friends portraying the characters who are navigating that world. Jeppy is your I name. Know, I know, I know. Fucking had it. Also, he didn't say we play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh yes, I'm legally obligated to say that we're an unofficial Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> podcast, and we play Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. There you go. Up, oh, just got off the phone with Legal, and we saved it. <laughs> My name is Jeppy. I play Illopel, who has finally learned how to use the sleep spell. I'm Jimmy. I play Clork, the Is It Engineer Goblin, who is friend to all elements. I guess, except for, like, ice, though. I don't really have too much association with ice these days. Mm. Really, you're just friends with um, fire and lightning. That's right. Right. Those are the most important. A lot of other, a lot of other elements that you're not friends with. Anyways. They beat up some earth elemental. Yeah, earth. Less episode. Air, heart. Here. I, I got it. I got it. I'm Andy, and I play Alwyn. I am a friend to ice and earth. Uh, Alwyn is a friend to ice and earth. And also, really glad Illipel finally learned how to use that sleep spell. There you go. Yes. Is Alwyn Captain Planet? Uh, no. Unofficially, yes. Unofficially, we are we are legally allowed to say so. unofficially, yes. He's a Golgari druid. I'll say no more. Okay. I don't know why you would after that shameful display, but if you are enjoying our content, um, oh. wow, please <laughs> engage with us. Uh... <laughs> Come rate us and review us and hang out with us on our social media platforms because that'll help more people listen to this fun little show we have here. And without further ado, let's begin that fun little show. This time for real. This time for real. What are you talking about? This is the only time that it happened. Yeah. Take one. Take one. Let's get into it with our recap quiz show where the game was last week and the points could get you advantage. We kicked the shit out of Bippo. Correct. <laughs> you did kick the shit out of Bippo. That's it. Bippo. That's all I want to say. That's all I'm going to say. I get all the points. Okay. That's all that matters. After meeting with Zytha, she told us that a sub-power station, which Clork may or may not have recognized the description of, was having some suspicious activity reported around. We were tasked to investigate in return for the favor of them potentially helping us against the arresters. Cool. Yes, correct. Um, since we're going backwards, <laughs> just before that, we uh, camped out. Clork made friends with the fire. The fire. Oh, yeah. And you gave it a hammer. Yeah. Right. Yes. It wanted to destroy the trappings of modern society, and so I gave it a hammer. Mm-hmm. Yep. We also ran into a Boros checkpoint outside of Kennen's shop. Correct. We're able to sneak past it, talk to Kennen, get some information about goings on in the area, and also the directions to Zytha's group. There was also an Etten who had a bad... Bad riddle. <laughs> I a solved bad, it. A bad riddle that Jeffy solved because everybody else is dumb. I mean, I also felt <laughs> dumb for not solving it sooner. Um. The Etten has a six intelligence. It's not going to be the best at riddles. Okay. What else happened? Oh, we kicked the shit out of Bippo. Yes, you said yep. that. And we've come full circle. Right. Uh, we're on the run from the law. Well, Correct. yeah, that too. Yeah. Tomek is now our... our Uh, officially designated legal counsel. Right. Going all the way back to the beginning of the episode, we were in a bind. Tomic cut us out really quick. But we're in a bind again. It came full circle. Yeah, Yeah, we are in a bind again. It's a pattern. We seem to end most episodes in a bind. We may or may not be surrounded. I'm not really sure yet. Probably are. You didn't make your perception check. Nope, that one's got no clue. Yeah, let's let's get right into that. Andy, you had three points to everyone else's two. You can take an inspiration d20. Yes! Illipel, you'll be able to act in the surprise round. You see a small group of Vaishino surround your party, creeping out from behind pieces of rubble to ambush you with some short swords drawn. So let's everyone roll initiative. At a 16. 8. Uh, 11. All right, Vaishino number one. How's everybody looking for hit points? Well, let's just say uh, I know what I'll be using my surprise round to do, and it will be healing. Okay. I'm all right. I'm almost at full. Okay, cool. And what Scal is like, okay, Illipel, they target you. (laughs) (laughs) 
Alwyn, a 20 hits you, yes? Of course. Okay. You take eight points of piercing damage Ugh. as a lizard man comes out of nowhere and knifes you with a knife. Or, um, yeah. short swords you with a short sword. Ugh. Where did you come from? I think it shorts you with a sword. Shorts you with a sword and then swings again. 23. Yeah. For another four points of piercing damage. Wow, not looking great anymore. Vaishino number two, Clork. You should still have mage armor up, yes? I think so, yes. Okay, yeah, that lasts eight hours, so. Uh, but two 17s uh, plus four is going to hit. <laughs> yeah. For seven points of slashing damage. And then with their offhand, 19 to hit for eight points of slashing damage. Illipel, you're up. My word, an ambush. I'm going to cast Healing Word on myself. Very magnanimous of you. <laughs> yep. I heal for seven, so... That's looking a little bit better, I guess. For my action, uh, where are these little shits? There's two with two swords in each of your friends. Okay. And there's one still hiding behind a rock, slow on the draw. Any way for me to put them asleep before I put my friends asleep with good positioning? They are standing right next to your allies. Yeah. You could I get a probably one of them, but okay. you wouldn't be able to get both of them. I'm okay. pretty low already. Yeah, all right. Is there a way to get one of them without getting any friends? Correct. Okay. All right, cool. I wanted to make sure. But you can't cast two spells in a turn. Yeah. Uh, I was just asking. You know, I, I don't want to do it. I just wanted to see if I could, um, if I could <laughs> cast a spell. C- Clerk can do it because he has quickened spell, but you cannot. Cool. All right. Uh... All right, I'll just fucking go up to one. Oh, I'll have advantage on my attack, right? Because they're engaged. I'm going to say your friends are not really posing a threat to these, Vyashino. They're surprised. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Wow. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. I think we're supposed to die in this encounter. I'm going to jump off a cliff. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) There are no cliffs around. Oh, my God. Okay, I take the sword and harikari myself. No, uh, we can scrap that. Good. You already said it. It's happening. Roll attack against yourself. (laughs) You can't retake your action. I'm being a real hard ass tonight. Seriously. All right. 15 to hit. 15 absolutely hits. May I ask, are you attacking the one who's attacking Alwyn or Clork? The one that attacked Clork did more damage, so Illipel sees that that was a bigger blow and is coming in to aid Clork. That is uh, nine points of piercing damage. All right, third Vyashino is going to go for you. You are not surprised, so it does not get advantage on these attack rolls. But uh, 16 plus 4 is going to hit for 6 points of piercing damage. And then offhand, 2 plus 4 is not going to hit. Am I surprised anymore? At the beginning of the next initiative round, which is now, no. Okay. So these attacks against you that the first Vyashino is making are not going to be with advantage. Okay, I'm going to spores him. Okay, cool. Con save... 16 plus 1. Passes. First attack is 11. Not going to hit. Nope. And 18 plus 4 will. Yep. Yikes. For 3 points of piercing damage. Alwyn, you are up. I think I've had enough of this. Going to action Symbiotic Entity. Gain all my temporary hit points. Okay. Bonus action. I'm going to... Illipel, how are you looking? A bad blow will end me. Okay. (laughs) Illipel looking hurt. Alwyn would probably never admit this directly, but through getting to know Illipel a little more, they have rubbed off on him. And so Alwyn will bonus action healing word. Ooh. Will, you're always saying we can do it together, right? Here goes nothing. And a healing word, Illipel, for eight health. Max roll on that. Okay. Sweet. Oh no, nine. I have a wisdom mod of five now. You do. I'll take That's my turn. Okay, Alwyn, that's your turn. Vyashino number two has two potential targets. It's going to take one swing at Illipel, one swing at Clork. Since it was already my turn, I'm going to go ahead and interrupt that with the spores again. Okay, sure. Can't say nine plus one is not going to do it. (sighs) Like I said, I've had enough. And they take six necrotic damage. They drop, so they are going to take no actions and make no attacks. Illipel, you're up. You see my necrotic spikes shoot through his legs and bring him to the ground. Was that the one I also attacked? Yes, that is the one you also attacked. All right. I will cast Dissonant Whispers on the other. Okay. It makes a wisdom save, correct? Yeesh. It did roll a dirty 20. Succeeds. But it will still take half damage from this. Half of 14 is 7 psychic damage. Okay. Clork, 
we are over to you. Hold on. I want to use my bonus action to Bardic Inspiration Clork. Very good. Well then, be on with it. End this sooner for us, will you? it would be my pleasure. And I'm going to Shocking Grasp the other one. Okay, very good. 14 to hit. 14. Is there AC? Nice. Very cool. And that's six lightning damage. Okay. This one drops. Okay, and I'm going to back away from the action. Okay. Very good. The third Vaishino, seeing his compatriots fall, is going to determine that you guys are not as easy prey as they may have initially surmised, going to use his action to disengage and flee. How far can they get in around? 30 feet is their speed. 30 feet away. Okay. If you'd like to attempt to pursue, they seemed to scramble over this ruined terrain a bit more adeptly than you do, so you might have to make some sort of sure. physical check to pursue them. If you would like to, it is your turn. It, it's my turn? Cool. I just sort of very coldly look at Illipel as I begin to conjure an ice knife in my hand, and I just go, Is it even worth it at this point? I suspect there's a wide variety of reasons they'd be after us. None worth our time or effort. But, if you seek to dispose of this rabble, be on with it. Glad I have your permission. And I chuck an ice knife at him. Okay, roll your attack. Alwyn, feeling like he's kind of had enough of being caught off guard this whole adventure, is not really going to spare any anything here. That is a 16 plus mod, and they need to make a dex save. Okay. Dex save is a 21. Okay, that passes... So just the initial blast of seven piercing. Okay. They stagger but do not fall. Illipel, it's your turn. I've spent all I care to. It's up to you now. Personally, I think you should do it. All right. Let's go ahead and blow my last spell slot on a Dissonant Whispers. (laughs) What could go wrong? Okay. We're not going to need that. No, we're not. Let's have some fun. He fails his saving throw, so. You love to see that. It's highly improbable he lives at this point. Indeed it is, because I got almost a max roll. Six, six, and five for 17. Holy shit. You see, from a distance, green blood just flows out of their ears as they wail horribly and drop to the ground, mentally destroyed by your spell. I didn't realize my words were that annoying. (laughs) We're glad to have them. Nice work, fellas. Well, all right. We can't be much farther now back to camp. I am quite tired. Let's be on our way. Very good. Make for me, if you will, one last group survival check to make it back to Boar's Head Park. Why can't I do this math right now? Oh, God. Okay, there we go. Fifteen. That's the same thing I had. Fifteen? Nine. I knew yours were going to be single (laughs) digit. You had a look. Like, you felt bad. Okay. No, average of 13, but you've been at this a while. You're close. I just want to get on with this adventure. There you go. <laughs> the most powerful DC of all. You make it successfully to Zytha's camp. Well, how'd it go? We disposed of the problem. I'm good. Run into any other troubles we might want to look out for out there? We disposed of the problem permanently. Bit of a Vaishinu ambush. We disposed of them as well. Yeah, those Slizzed clan folk like to prey on the unwary wandering through here. Well, it seems we've held up our end of the arrangement. So you have. So I guess I'm going to need some more logistical details from you about where and when you want us to make a scene. Alwyn looks back to the group. We we don't really know that yet, do we? No, guess not. Always a good time for a scene. You look pretty beat up. Why don't you stay here with us tonight? I can probably find a spare tent for at least one of you. Give you some time to sleep on it and we can talk details in the morning. Sounds great. Hey, by the way, you got any hot dogs? Here we go. <laughs> Alan winks to Illipel. Ah, yes. Famous hot dogs. This is a mixed company. We get all sorts here. We've got some goblins, but even I think that's kind of a barbaric practice. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Now, a cat, on the other hand. Mm. Oh, of course. Of course. There's just too many of them, you know? And where did you say the tent was again? Well, dig one out of storage and you can set it up yourself. Ah, I appreciate you. I look forward to whatever food you have to serve (laughs) that isn't cat or dog. Or cat dog. I just sort of pat them on their shoulder. There, there, Hilpel. I think you'll be all right. We've got lots of pigeon. There's always more pigeons. Mm, It all sounds good. 
unless you guys want to do anything amongst yourselves, nothing this short rest. Wait, long rest or short rest? Sorry, long rest. No, I'm taking the the LR. Yeah, this is going to be a long rest. Okay, so before I go to bed, I want to cast ritually Animal Messenger. I sort of look around the area, the dark night beyond the light of the flame, and I try and reach out to a spider or some other small insect that I know will be able to navigate through the Undercity. I describe to them my mother, Rena, this tremendous force of a Gorgon woman, and I describe Stonehaven, this enormous underground castle in the Undercity, and I speak these words as the message. We are being hunted by compromised arrestors. Stonehaven could be a target. We need to talk. Ready our defenses and watch for my coming. And that's the message. Very good. This little black shell beetle that has answered your call shitters a bit and flips out its wings from beneath its chitinous back and takes off into the night with this message. So what time of day will I get the key rune back? You used it in the middle of the night. So midday, I would say. Because it's 36 hours. Okay. You settle down at Zytha's camp. You gain the benefits of a long rest. You wake up in the morning. What would you like to do? I think I've got an idea of a symbol, uh, a sign of a Turk we can give them. But I don't know how much longer we have. How many more allies we can find. I think our friends in the Undercity are definitely who we should go to next. I don't know how long it'll take those arresters to make their way that far. But I should be able to beat them there. I know no better guy than you. I wish I could say I could offer someone to aid us, but the reality is, besides a few trunk patrons at the Violet Rose, really there's no one. Alwyn, I think our safety and security, and the fate of our mission with the Guild Pact, lies in your hands. Clark, is there anyone at the League who could be of assistance? Uh, I could be of assistance! You hear a voice call off from behind no. you. No! See... I think I know who this is. Don't say it! Don't say it! Is this Silas? No. Oh, man, I this is Silas. You see an old brass-scaled Vyashinu sort of just saunter into this camp, or as if they woke up there. They've got, is it, blue and red jumpsuit, walking stick in the shape of a power coil, and a number of lenses that can flip over their eye. Alwyn, you would recognize this gentleman as Vim, the person who originally recruited you. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Alwyn sort of gives a stare into the distance towards them and focuses his eyes. Vim? Master Greenwolf! Hello! And Clark! Where where did you come from? How did you find us? Uh, I have my ways, my methods, uh, and um, Illapel. It is good to see you all whole. I have some important information. He met the whole party, right? Am I... He just met you. Okay, I was going to say, he wasn't at the office after the teleportation. Nope. Good to see me whole. Why would I be in parts? And how do you know my name? I know many things. Your name is just a small fraction of them. Sure, that doesn't answer my question. How? Illipel, this is Vim, the Vigorous. He is the one responsible for bringing me into this little party. Vim, I am most grateful for your keen selection of my dear friend Alwyn, but perhaps you can still explain how you know who I am, and with vigor. (laughs) That is the method that I prefer to go about things. In brief, the Guild Pact has many uh, contacts still within the League, and has appointed the most depth and intelligence of them to uh, keep a watchful eye, and he sort of flips some of his lenses down, on the projects that are of importance to him. And so, I have been monitoring your exploits. That's an innocuous enough explanation for me. Surely because you flattered me a little bit there. I'm not blind to it, but in any event, I am satisfied with that explanation. Vim, what services might you offer? Information, the greatest service of all. And on that we can agree. Clark rolls his eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Your adversary has secured himself. Yes. Within the spire of the sentries, a Liev watchtower within the heart of the second precinct, he has assembled a considerable force there. While this rabble that you've roused to yourselves may be uh, useful, 
in perhaps penetrating a single line of defense, there are multiple, and having another ally, I think, is quite prudent. And what does your allyship offer? Oh, uh, no, no, not me. My allyship is purely logistical. Another Tomek, if you will. <laughs> uh, while I somewhat resent the comparison, uh, he is thoroughly proficient at his particular line of work. On that we can woefully agree. So the spoil... Is there anything you can tell us about the inside? Best way to climb it? What could be waiting? I suggest you climb it from the inside. I believe scaling the outside may put you at the mercy of Sky Knights or other such aerial combatants. Angels. Though the inside will have wards and, I would suspect, a handful of enchanted defenses, spirits, constructs, things of that sort. Alwyn hears enchantments and tries to hide his reaction as his mind immediately jumps to Edric. Very well. Would you happen to know, other than setting in this great defense that they've built, how strong is their force? What I mean to say, I know they're searching for us, but do you know anything about their parties, about their numbers, moving about the city? It has been a difficult situation to monitor in its entirety. There are many moving pieces. I will say they likely know you are out here, but do not deem you worth the risk to send for you in this ruined terrain. I sort of look to Clark and Illipel. So they're expecting us to come. Sounds that way. Could very well just be a trap. Several of them. Exactly what they want. But they don't know that we know that they think it's a trap. I don't think that changes particular circumstances. So if they set a trap for us, but they're expecting us to figure out that it's a trap, so then they know that we know it's a trap, what do they do next? Uh, they probably trap us. Trap us. Well, then they'd probably just expect us to attack them head on, right? I suppose, yes. Okay. Do you think that's a good plan, Cloak? It depends. Do they know that we know that we think we know that they think it's a trap? I don't know if we know. I don't know. I know you don't know. (laughs) 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 Holy shit! Clark Uh. is the only person who could possibly pull this, like, pull this fucking... Think this hard. (laughs) Oh my god. Clark, again, I can't fathom the depth of deductive knowledge. I'm speechless. That's why I'm the leader. I give the most obvious wink to Illipel as I say this. I feel quite the same. I mean, I'm trying my best to break this down to its most logical, lowest common denominator. Wow, truly brilliant work. So you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that we should just go to the Undercity and find allies and continue with the plan? I think so, yeah. Great. At this point, Zytha has wandered into this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Zaitha, I think I have a way, a plan, how to inform your merry band here as to the attack on this spire of the centuries. All right, let's hear it. Well, the past few days, I've been meditating during my rest in on a couple of rituals I've overlooked in my druid training. One of them I was able to use to send word to Stonehaven, but another, a skyrite spell... I could conjure a message in the sky. You'd have to react to it quickly. It doesn't last that long, but I could cast it high enough where any who would aid us would be able to see it. So we'll have to be in position beforehand, waiting for your signal. Aye. All right. Getting past the Legion barricade might take us some time. I expect we'll probably have to start moving now if you want to launch this assault in the next few days. Aye, and not a moment later. Very good. We'll probably move out shortly after you. We'll wait for your signal. I sort of turned to Illipel. Well, Master Wordsmith, if you could come up with a phrase, a short one, a signal, something to stir the hearts and the souls of those who'd stand with us against this evil, what be those words? Hopefully you'll permit this. I think for once in my life, words won't do. And then I will use prestidigitation to create like a small little glitch in the air of the guild pact symbol. Very good. You make the symbol of the 
ten icons of the guild surrounding this stylized silhouette of a dragon. Would I be able to use that with Skyrite? Let me look at the text of Skyrite. Text does say ten words or less. Mm, it's cool. Let's it go with cool. it. Okay. You'll send up the dragon signal, and that's how they'll know. I can think of none better myself. Very well. Zytha, look for the symbol. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> and uh, the, the lot of you are looking to get to Stonehaven, yes? Aye. It's been a long time since I've been there, but I think I've got a clear enough picture in my mind that I could convey you. Oh, been there? Vim, you didn't mention this when we met. Oh, I've... I've been many places, my dear uh, um, 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 friend. Hey, he's been many places, he knows many things, he's met many people. No point, really, in explaining any of that to us. <laughs> this one has the correct idea of things. Come, let us go. Gather around me. Join hands, you know, pretend like you like each other. I kind of look down to Clark to see what he does. <laughs> Who's pretending? Why? <laughs> <laughs> no one looks at Illipel. I avoid looking at Illipel. <laughs> Illipel will take hands. They will clasp hands and get into it. No, I look right at Illipel. All right, let's All do right. it. You clasp hands. There is a hum of of electrical current gathering in the air. A static charge builds into this portal that opens, swallowing your group. And you appear in the mossy courtyard of Stonehaven with its many lifelike stone statues, one of which is of your brother. Owen takes a deep breath. Mm, smells like home. I look around, look for anybody. Yours is standing guard. Of course. Yours. Ooh, a little surprised by your arrival. Forgive our entry, Yours. I guess I was expecting you another way. Well... So was I, to be honest. Well, means I won't have to charge out onto the bridge to help you. I immediately look towards the gates and the bridge at that. Keep your head down. <sighs> you got my message then. Aye, we did. We're being watched. Mm. Just one arrester camping out in the cavern somewhere, out there in the darkness. Just one? Just one for now. Keeping a watch. Making sure you don't try and hide out here. Well, we've got Vim here for that. Ah, yes. Hello. Uh, g- g- good good to meet you. Yours. Good to meet you, yours. I'm Vim. Vim the Vigorous, as they called me when I was younger. I'm an ally to your young Alwyn here, and a liaison to the Guild Pact. You need not fear me, but I, I may wish to excuse myself now that you are all here. Thank you, Vim. Could not done it without you. Ah, it is my pleasure to be of assistance. And, as he says that, is lizardy form shrinks into a little tiny newt and he just scurries through the bars of the portcullis and off across the bridge <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> all right let's go and i immediately start heading towards the great hall towards rena yeah your mother is sitting on her rootwood throne her wolves at her feet i walk in and bow same habit of a routine as i would always give upon returning it's good to see you home son and your friends as well. Be welcome in Stonehaven. So, you're being hunted. Is that the situation, as I'm to understand it? Our business with the Guild Pact has brought us to a great conflict, as it were. A group called the Rujeva, if it means anything to you. A sort of secret group of Azorius and others. She spits. Do you know them? Aye, that I do. The Senate has always treated us as less than, because we don't conform to their idea of what order should be. We have our own order, the natural order, and they would impose their unnatural order on us. No. Her snake-like tendrils are twisting agitatedly as she says this. I see her starting to get riled up, and I fucking get riled up too. I'm like, Oi. Oi. And none are more stubborn than those traditionalists. Their faction holds us in the greatest contempt. You don't need to convince me to send yours and some soldiers to aid you in whatever you might need. We're grateful for the help. But you know our ways. All things grow from death. Aye, they do. And as all life requires death, so service requires sacrifice. 
after the invasion, a great number of the invading corpses were collected by our sworn and held to be... Mother, are you speaking of the Eternals? I am. I look to Illipel like, we have a mutual friend who's getting up to some shit. Have any gone missing of late? Are the numbers not adding up? Yes. Several of the vaults where they were being held have been emptied, and there's another we believe will be emptied tonight. I can't promise that all the numbers will add up, but I may have an idea as to where they're going. I can at least account for one. Rena, are you familiar with the Wilted Petal? Vaguely. It's a halfway house in between territories. It's a small tavern on the way out of the Undercity. Mother, we may have run into a part of this problem. A sort of result of these missing bodies. Halfway house is an astute observation. It is rather dingy. The proprietor knows nothing about running a proper establishment. (laughs) (laughs) In any event, the proprietor is what is of concern. Her name is Anel Gast. I will be oh, Make very a constitution f- save. <laughs> and I like, really, thought, I uh, really uh, thought you weren't going to say it. Well, no. But, well, remember, also, Illipel... I mean, I fucked up as a player, but Illipel also has not figured yeah. this out yet. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it is a 17. I remember it being high last time and I barely saved. Get him. Get his ass. As you say, Anel... Illipel. You feel your windpipe close up. And you struggle for breath. You're staggered. Make another constitution save. Cool. This time I have a 19. I have a 16 on the dice plus 3. That'll just do it. You feel as if all of the air is about to be squeezed out of you. But you manage to fight through and intake a large breath. Illipel, what was that? And you feel a low resonance in the ring around your fingers. And you hear in your mind... I told you to keep my name out of your mouth. And there she is. My apologies. Illipel will kind of put themselves back together a little bit. The proprietor, an evil woman, may have some involvement, but more upsetting still, may have been may have been partially or wholly responsible for what happened with Yedrick. They speak the truth. I've seen the letters myself. Rena stands. Whatever is going on here is certainly concerning. They call themselves the Consortium. This Onel Gast and one Dr. Taganti of the Combine. They're involved. We don't know if there are others, but we can assume as much. She calls her steward over. Pella, have word sent to Karozda of these goings on. Vraska and the rest of the ruling council deserve to know. Mother, the Rogerva, the Consortium, all of these secret organizations... At every turn, you're the strongest person I know. What are we to do against these forces who, for all my life, I've known how to keep an eye over my shoulder, and now at every turn, we take it in the teeth. She walks over to you, she puts a hand on your shoulder, and she pushes you down with her to the floor of this room and puts a hand on the floor. Feel that. Hmm. Look around you, my son. Time swallows hubris and arrogance of all those who seek to raise themselves above the natural order. I know these times are trying, but the stone is patient. I ask you to be patient as well. Owen just takes a deep breath very quietly as they're both sitting on the floor. We endure. Beyond all else, we endure. And then she rises. I shall provide you directions to the vault. I just ask you to stand guard over it tonight. And if you do that, your sacrifice will be honored, and we shall sacrifice in kind. I get up and nod. Thank you. She returns to her throne. She pets Mulch a little bit behind the ears. I need to speak to Idric. She nods. Yeah, we can end that scene here. Great. Fucking good stuff. God damn. Thank you. You're in the audience hall of Stonehaven. What next do you do? Alwyn looks at two undead wolves before the throne. (sighs) Friends, there's something I think I need to do that will help us. Forgive me, but will you wait for me here? Where are you going? Alwyn has provided us much aid. I do not think he owes us an explanation. It's all right, little Bill. Cloak, I'm going to speak to Edric. He's being kept in his chambers. Okay. Probably shouldn't be there for that anyway. You'd prefer to go alone. For the time being, I won't be long. All right. 
you can easily enough find Etrick's room. Uh, the door is shut. I approach the door and stop for a moment, and then I, without knocking, enter. Okay. As you walk in, you see Edric standing on a chair, a book in hand, a piece of chalk in the other, vigorously writing on the stone walls, some sort of magical formula, muttering, <laughs> What in all the undead gods beneath this earth are you doing? Well, so we're talking again, are we? Get down from there, you could kill yourself. You look ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we're joking again, are we? You Shut up and sit down. We're still arguing, though. Still arguing. All right. I can't make any sense of any of this anyhow. Slams the chalk down on a desk as he steps down from the chair, shuts the book angrily and throws it on his bed. So how have your last few weeks been? I'll be the one asking the questions. I'll start with a simple one. All right. Now tell me true. When you picked up that gyre, was it your thought or its to take it to the Combine? I don't think I was enchanted by it. So it ponders for a moment. But I did feel with it a sort of pull. But it was my own choice to do what I did. I thought if I brought it where it wanted to go, it would be easier to get the answers. But uh, he sort of looks at the scratching all over his walls. I should have known it was never going to be easy to get the answers. Owen looks down at the floor, trying to keep up the stern face from what is quickly fading to sullen after hearing that response. (sighs) This business you've gotten us into, I've recently learned that it's got a lot more to do with a great many things in this city. He sort of looks confused at you. My business with the Guild Pact keeps bringing me back to Tagunti, to this consortium, to all of this dark business... In the corners of the darkness in this undercity, the thought, foolishly perhaps, that maybe they just twisted your ear. I don't know what I expected. I'm sorry, I'm confused. I don't know anything about anything you just said. I mean, Taganti, yes, but... Can I make an insight check? Yeah, go ahead. 23? He seems pretty bewildered by what you're saying. I don't know of any consortium... Hang on, let me me roll me history check. (laughs) They were an old crime syndicate thieves. Sort of an offshoot of the Dimmer or something Uh, like that. He's fucking proficient in history. I should have known this shit. (sighs) Well, they haven't been active in years. So you know who they are? I mean, rumors and such. They say the the former living guild pact used to work for them. But again, that's not confirmed and possibly propaganda... They were here, and then they weren't. Likely stamped out by their competitors, or absorbed into the dimmer. Well, I've got an ally downstairs who was nearly choked by some foul magic, just by saying one of their names. Well, I won't say that's out of character for them. Perhaps someone trying to use their mystique to start another operation. Make no mistake when I say this. I'm still mad as hell, you. But the fight I'm about to get into... The fight that we're about to get into. I saw you down there, when that gyre abomination attacked. I may hate you for what you did, but I'm not going to call you a bad fighter. Idric, I don't know what's going on with you. And he sort of gestures to the whole room. Yeah. This quest you're on, this transformation, we may need your help. Roll persuasion. Is is that? No. That's a flat three. Oof. Idric looks at you, and his eyebrows narrow, and he raises his voice. You're unhappy with me. How do you think I feel? I'm trying to make amends, but you took everything I'd been working on from me. I was making progress in the sanctum, and now it's all just a jumble. I'm not saying I was close. I'm not saying I was close. It's not a problem. You can never really be close to solving, but... At least to to the next question that will get you to the next question. I was making a breakthrough. The primordial enigma. The I interrupt what he's saying by taking him in both hands and slamming him up against the wall. Alwyn is bigger than Edric. Yeah, go ahead and make an athletics check. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I thought I thought I could pull this off. Well, I, I you do have your inspiration die if this moment is important. I'm gonna use it because that there. was a one. <laughs> that was a one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> did it did it go from a one to a two or something like that? It went to a six. Okay, that's still which enough. is a total which is a total of seven. That's kind of funny. <laughs> your your brother also rolled a one. Oh Holy shit! my god! <laughs> <laughs> go get the fuck out! You slam him against the wall, and it's not gracefully at all. It's like how two teenage boys would. Yeah. Wood rough house, right? You, you first bar fight like yeah. off his shoulders, and yeah. he stumbles back into the wall. I'll be having none of that from you. I dragged you out of that foul place for your own life, not to save it for you, but to save it for mother. And don't you forget that. I don't give a damn about your research about this sick quest. I care about this family. I care about her. About this house. I didn't abandon it. The first drop is some trinket. I'm asking you for help, not because I want to, but because we have to. I could have known secrets about the nature of life itself, and part of that you took from me, and it hurts. There is an emptiness, not just in my mind, where the questions still swirl, but in my heart, because you couldn't understand. I've tried. I have. I know I'm not ungrateful, but I am, to some extent... I'm glad that I'm home, but there's something missing that's gnawing at me. Maybe it'll be quiet someday, but not yet, and I'm not ready to forgive you. Besides, Mother won't let me out of the house, so I'm afraid you'll have to fight this fight on your own. <sighs> yeah, well, I could still take you in throws. Don't you forget it. <laughs> ah, so we're joking again, are we? Yeah, if I make it out of this thing... We gotta get your head looked at. <laughs> ah, maybe you're right. Maybe. He goes back, sits on his bed, opens the book up again. And I leave. Okay. Cool. <sighs> so how'd it go? <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I asked a foolish favor to a foolish boy. We best get a move on. Mm, that good, huh? Clark. Yeah? Is there any way your great dragon master would be able to know if someone's mind, not their memories, but their intentions, have been tempered with? Yeah, without doubt. Firemind can do whatever he wants. I suspect this isn't the end of our encounter with Dr. Tagonti and those foul gyres down below. You planning something? He's himself, but sort of bent, skewed somehow. To some extreme part of himself. I can't make sense of it. Clark, you can make an insight check here. Okay. I have very little, like, player knowledge of what is possibly going on here, and this is just Alwyn grasping at straws. Well, here goes, uh... A flat 18. Clark, you hear the way that Alwyn is sort of describing his brother, and it sort of rings a bit of a bell for you. You've been a lab assistant long enough to know when someone is just obsessed with a problem and that's kind of what this sounds like clark furrows his brow hmm you think maybe he's just uh really into what he's doing part of me honestly is afraid of that and what would that mean for you i'm not sure like i said he's always been like this but i mean i think a little bit of curiosity or sometimes a lot of curiosity can be a good thing no i Oh, it can. Clark, your font of wisdom never ceases to amaze me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the fact, I, I was being the sincere. Fact, yeah. The fact that Clark didn't know what to do with it is what... Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Incredible. All right. So if there's nothing else you want to do here, a few hours will pass before Rena will be like, it's time. You'll want to leave through the dungeons. If you don't want the watch to see you, here's probably the best route, hands you a rolled up parchment. As she's giving this to us, I do kind of want to just briefly mention, because Alwyn didn't connect these the last time we were here. Mother, on our travels, as of late, 
We've run into a Gorgon, a very fine woman by the name of Lana. She said she knew you from a long time ago. Aye, we've been close for centuries, I'd say. But she's got her little patch of ground. Still talk to each other, you know. She told me you were quite helpful to her. I wonder if she'd be able to help us in any way. She's a fiercely skilled botanist. I'll say that's not the only thing she's fiercely skilled at. I thought as much. Could you send a message? I can. Be safe, my child. I don't know what might be coming for you through those tunnels tonight. I'll be sure. Did you pack a late night snack? I've got sausages of dubious origin. <laughs> oh, my favorite. I'm sure Cloak would love some. Ah, our good friend here does love dodgy meats. She, like, sends a, a servant to go get some. Brings you, like, a little bag full of these sausages. Ah, that's great. Could get used to that. Hell yeah. All right. Okay. You head down through the lower levels of Stonehaven, out a secret door in the dungeon into another network of tunnels within the Undercity. With this map, I'm going to say, Alwyn, just roll me survival with advantage to lead the party. Okay. I haven't traveled these paths in years. That's a 22. With ease, you can find the vault she spoke of. Vault is sort of a generous descriptor. Nothing like the elaborately shaped and consecrated vaults you were in just a few nights ago. You come to a large archway that leads into another cavern, and it's got a makeshift door of heavy wooden slats sort of built over it. But this looks to be the place. There is a path leading off the way you came, and then another path leading deeper into the Undercity. Both of these large worm tunnels, and you think the cavern beyond might also be a similarly immense holding area where perhaps a worm hibernated. You can tell that these tunnels are probably 20 by 20 in all directions. Could be all manner of creatures down here. Not just our enemies. Watch your step, friends. I mean, if this if this seems like kind of the entrance to this structure, I will go ahead and cast Pass Without Trace. Okay, you cast Pass Without Trace. Are you going to try and, like, hide and maybe set up an ambush? Yeah, I guess that was, like, my intention. Sure, everyone go ahead and roll me still. No, then let's not do this like those Boros up in the wastes, yeah? We should hide, we should prepare. What if that's what they're expecting us to do? I love this 5D chess clerk that's emerging tonight. <laughs> I just look right back at clerk and I go, and what if that's what they're expecting us to expect them to do? Oh my god, you're right. We gotta hide. <laughs> <laughs> I wink at Elipel. And just in case they're expecting us, let's hide very well. I roll a 16. Is that including the plus 10? No, okay. that's 26. 17. 29. All very good rolls. You blend into the shadows along the cavern wall. Let's see if any of these comes up 20. If I also have time before whatever happens happens. You do. Uh, you don't know how much time, though. Less than eight hours, I'm sure. I'm going to put up mage armor. Very good. That's not worth it. Never mind. So after about 30 minutes of you lying in ambush, everyone roll me perception. I would definitely oh. also have shillelagh up and okay. hold entity for like the first sign of action okay have it like ready to take form yeah sure so perception i got a nat 20 for a total of 22 nice Ooh. alan's only got a 12 i got a two <laughs> okay <Jeez. laughs> everyone but clork hears the alarm bell <laughs> the squelching of feet through wet dirt approaching you. Clark is chewing on sausage. Illipel, you can look and see in the distance, coming towards this doorway, a group of skeletons with spears, and behind them, a couple more skeletons with bows, advancing in a military manner. I'll look to Alwyn and Clark and just gesture to them, like, you know, stay low. Stay hidden. I'll do a gesture of, like, you know, turning my head back and forth, side to side, like, it doesn't look good. Get down, kind of thing. What are you, what are you waving at? What are you shh, doing? Shh, shh, shh. Quiet yourself. 
point at yourself right now. I don't see anything. Would Alwyn think that skeletons are... Friends? Yeah. Or would, from what Renna told me, would I just assume these are the perpetrators? Roll me like a flat wisdom check. Cool. Well, this dice that gave me uh, seven nat 20s in one game has so far given me three nat 1s in this game. So that's six. Sometimes in Undercity, skeletons good. Sometimes in Undercity, skeletons bad. You don't know. You can't assume. They're just people, man. Yeah, profiling is bad, dude. Don't do it. Yep. All right. I just stay low and throw up entity. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Anyone else doing anything as these skeletons march down the corridor? Continuing to shush, Clark. What skeletons? Okay. Did we even look in the vault? Do we know that there is Eternals in there? I mean, your mom told you there were. Right. But is it a situation where, like, they could... I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I rolled a six. <laughs> okay. These skeletons come to the vault door, and they begin banging on it with the butts of their spears. Well... That's not a great sign. Okay. Are they all kind of close together? You said in sort of like a formation, right? Yeah, there's like four of them standing arm to arm across the length of this tunnel. And then there's two of them behind with bows. I sort of look at Illipel and kind of shrug and be like, is this it? Do you really want to engage? I mean, I'm the only one who would know this and I don't know this. So I guess we're doing Bang. this. Yeah. Bang. Alwyn's going to throw out an entangle on as many as he can get. Okay, cool. Everyone, let's roll initiative. Great. One of the skeletons did get a nat 20. So did I. On its perception check. So one of them will get to go in the surprise round. Okay. I got an 18 initiative. I got a dirty 20. I got a 20 with a 3 is 23. All right. Illipel, you're up first. All right. I'm going to hit as many of them as I can with fairy fire. Uh, okay. Hell yeah. Uh, Dex saves. Uh, well, one of them got an 18. I've got a 5, 10, and 4 on three more of them. Yeah, so it looks like two of them pass and the rest of them fail. And there are six total, right? Correct. Cool. I will use bonus action to Alwyn. I will say, I've illuminated them for you. Your courage should do the rest. I give a daring nod. Okay, skeleton number one is up next. It made its perception check. It gets to go in the surprise round. It's going to raise its spear and attempt to stab Illipel with a 22 to hit for maximum of 10 points of piercing damage. Yikes. Cool. Good way to start the new rest cycle. (laughs) Okay, Clark, you're up. All right, right off the bat, let's do a second level chaos bolt. Nice. Just right at uh, one of these. Are there entangled ones now? I don't think I got that off yet. Yeah, Alwyn hasn't gone yet. Oh, uh, okay. Got it. Okay, but there are fairy-fired ones. The, yes, there are fairy-fired ones. Four of them? Ones. Four of them. Okay, I'm going to fire off a chaos bolt at one of the fairy-fired ones. Great. 14 to hit. With advantage? With advantage. Actually, this matters. Are you attacking one of the spearmen or one of the bowmen? I guess the spearmen, because they were closer to the... Unfortunately, that is going to miss the spearmen. They have shields. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Are you adding your proficiency to your attack rolls? Yeah, of course. I rolled a three and a nine, and I added five. Man. It's it's crazy, because, like, it's not like the die is weighted badly, because, like, the low numbers are on all sides of the die. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it just comes up with any any number below ten. <laughs> Always. Clark is very much a tragic figure here. Yep. Yeah. Your chaos bolt grazes off the shield of this skeleton. <sighs> okay, hold on. Maybe I should do something else. Um, fuck it. I'm going to try again. Come on, All Clark, right. You got this. All right. Same thing. Second level chaos bolt right at this time. One of the archers. Okay. <laughs> it's a 15. 15 hits. Thank God. All right. That's really good damage. That's 21 lightning damage. Jesus. It explodes in a shower of bone fragments. Fucking Elder Scroll style. Just Hell yeah, it does. <laughs> good. That was worth two second level spell slots. Jesus. Kill one fucking skeleton. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Alwyn, you're up. I'm going to do what I was going to do. I'm going to cast Entangle on as many as I can get. That's a 20-foot radius? 20-foot square. Okay, yeah. That's a dex save from all of them? That's a strength save from all of them. Okay, uh, what's your DC? 
My DC is now a 15. 15, okay. So two passes, two fails, three fails. Cool. Uh, so they're restrained. Okay. Hopefully the ones that failed were the ones that were away from Glorgor. And then I'm going to tank in front of as many of these guys that are not restrained as possible. Okay. Well, the rest of them are surprised. We go back to the top. Illipel. I think I'm going to just melee the one attacking us. The one attack that attacked me. Okay. Very good. Is that one of the fairy fired ones? or No, that one is saved against everything. Cool. Fuck this guy. Get him. Uh, I'm going to with an at 20. Woo! I'm you sorry. That to rolls too good. You miss. <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> I do love to see it. And seven, uh, we'll just call it 17 then, piercing damage. Even with it being a bony creature and piercing weapons passing through it, you manage to stab it, knock its head, clean off. This one falls. Skeleton number three is fairy fired, not entangled. It's going to run up to Alwyn and take a stab. I'll go ahead and have this one make the spore save. 16 on the con save. Yeah, that passes. Okay. Just passes. Uh, and a 19 on the to hit. Yep. D8 for the spear. Do your worst. Its worst is five points of piercing damage. Psh. Clork, we are back to you. All right. I'm going to use lightning lore on one of these. Are any hurt? No, you've both one shot two of them. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there are none injured. There's one who just ran up to Alwyn. There's another three that are caught in this sort of entangling vines. Are there any within... Melee range of Illipel. You could make one be within melee range of Illipel. I could pull one past Illipel? Yeah. All right. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use Lightning Lore to pull one of them past Illipel, and that is going to be a strength save. It rolled a 12 on its strength save. I imagine that fails. That does fail. Because I believe my... Okay. Yeah, my save is 13. Okay, so it's going to pass through Illipel's space. And Illipel is going to take an attack of opportunity. Sure. 17. 17 hits. And that is 7 piercing damage. Okay. And as I pull it the rest of the way towards me, it's going to take 8 lightning damage. Nice. Okay, this one explodes in a shower of bones. I put up my hand, like, for a high five towards Illipel. Illipel gives a polite nod, and then after a a half second does an air high five back. Yeah. <laughs> Alwyn, you're up. Awesome. Are there any still standing that are not entangled? There's the one right in your face. Okay, great. I'm going to hit it. That's a 19. That hits. This is with gavel. This is shillelagh. That's nine bludgeoning and three necrotic. Okay, yeah, this one crumples to the ground. This one's gone. Awesome. This feels too easy. This can't be all. I'm going to step towards the next nearest and swing again. Okay. And because they're entangled, still with advantage. That Correct. is a 19 plus mod. Yes, hits. On Shillelagh. That is six bludgeoning, three necrotic. Okay. Its bones are cracked and broken, but it still seems to retain some fighting spirit. It's going to direct that fighting spirit towards you. Hell yeah. I just kind of spit in its face and go, Who sent you? Knowing that skeletons can't fucking talk back. It's restrained, so disadvantage on this. It would have hit with a 19, but the disadvantaged roll is a nat 1. Yeah, get out of the face. <laughs> and the other one is going to launch an arrow at you. 15 hits. 15 just hits. You take 6 points of piercing damage. Cool. Cool. Let me go ahead and make a con save. Uh, I passed the first one. Let me just make another one for the five damage that I took before I roll four. And I passed the other one, too. Okay. You retain concentration on your entangle. Illipel, we return to you. All right. It's funny, because I'm trying to save my spell slots. I would. Did Alwyn not just kill the one that he went after? No, it's still standing. Still standing, looking hurt. On a scale of one to 12, it seems to be a three. All right. I'm just going to attack the nearest one. Yep. Do you have to make a save as you enter the entanglement? No. Save's only uncast, and then it's difficult terrain thereafter. Okay. Uh, it's difficult terrain, but these tunnels aren't so wide that you can't get to this creature. Okay. I probably have advantage because it has fairy fire on it still, right? Yes. Right. My first roll was a 14 for a dirty 20, so I don't think I need it, but yeah, dirty 20. Yep, you hit. And 7 on the die plus 4 is 11. This shit did. <laughs> Okay, this one is bone dust. 
One archer remains. Clark, it's your turn. All right. These guys don't seem very strong, so I'm going to run up and lightning lure this one now. Okay. That's a strength save. Strength save, right. That's me rolling a die. Seven plus nothing ain't going to do it. No, it's not. So I'm going to pull him towards me. And he's going to take two lightning damage. Okay. And then I'm going to disengage as a bonus action. Very Hell good. yeah. Alwyn, your turn. Okay. Yeah, going to hit him. That's a 18. Hits. That should do. That's 10 bludgeoning, 6 in a crowd. More than sufficient. The last skeleton is no more. Well, as you said, it was perhaps too easy. Someone must have sent them. Either as a first assault or I suspect maybe even a destruction. Or a way to lure us out. I'll start, like, looking around. Sure. Roll perception or investigation. Are we being watched? Was that group, like, being followed, being steered or something? Fine roll. That is going to be a 18. You don't see anyone else in these tunnels as far as you can send your dancing lights out. And the the door to this vault is closed? Correct. They were banging yeah. on it with the butts of their spears trying to break it down. Is there any way I can look inside without opening these doors? Or do I think I can open them and then close them? Or are they like big stone? Once they're open, they're open. It's wooden. It's like a makeshift wooden door. It does appear locked, though. Do you think they could already be inside? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if you want to make me roll for this, but I'm having a thought here where I could wild shape into a tiny spider and mm-hmm. go inside and look around and come back out. Yeah, I did say they're just slats of wood thrown together. Oh, so you could okay. probably find a little space between yeah. them to slip through as a spider. I could wild shape and go inside and have a look around. See if perhaps they've already had their way. But I would need to take a rest after that if we're to expect another encounter. Does this feel like a safe place where we could rest? Yeah. As safe as any worm yeah. tunnel in the Undercity is. But you feel like... You can expect to be able to short rest. Very well. Keep an eye out. If anything goes wrong, I'll probably start hollering or something. And I wild shape into a poisonous spider. Cool. Make me an acrobatics check just to get through these slats. Love it. Let me go ahead and look at the stat block quick. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, Dex plus three. That's a 14. 14. Yeah, that's fine. You're a tiny spider. You can squeeze your way through the gaps between these planks of wood. Uh, You go into this large cylindrical cavern, and you do see heaps upon heaps of blue encased corpses. Mm. And actually, go ahead and make me an investigation check while you're here. Oh, of course. A flat 18. Oh, wait. (laughs) No, hold on. This is the spider stats. Minus four. No, I think you keep your mental stats. Oh, you, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay, so a flat 18. <laughs> Jesus. Hmm. 18. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think I'll give you this. Oh, boy. Underneath these heaps and heaps of corpses, you see what looks like towards the back of this chasm. No. A long, sharp bill sticking out of the pile. What the f- like a waterfowl's beak. I sort of chitter to myself, like, what the fuck? I'm not going to get close, but I'm I'm not going to get extremely close, but I'll get closer. Okay. I just want to see if it's, like, breathing, alive, inanimate. What's going on with this thing? Go ahead and roll me one more investigation check. It's flat 14. Everything in here seems completely inanimate. Okay. If things look quiet, I'll return to the rest of the group. Okay. Uh, Make me one more acrobatics check to sort of slip out. Sure. Get fucking stuck in here. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's a dirty 20. Yeah. No problem. You squeeze out between the gaps and the planks. I squeeze back out. I drop my spider form. You see Alwyn appear before you. (sighs) Seemed quite enough. A lot of bodies, that's for sure. And one, one big one. With a big sort of bird's bill. Massive thing. All the way in the back of the room. Like a Simic? Is this recognizable at, at all? Everyone can roll me history, as Alwyn describes this. Could I? And, uh, Clark, you can roll this with advantage. Yeah, <laughs> good. This couldn't fall under nature? No. No? Twelve. Okay. It actually could fall under religion. Ain't got that. <laughs> Dirty 20. On history. I've got a six. Illipel reads some more newspapers than everyone else. 
Sure. Illipel, hearing this description, thinks, Big, sharp bill. There were, like, four, like, really big... No! Andy! No! Oh, fuck! None of that's usable audio. Sort of four. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. ahead. Oh, <laughs> no! Right, let, him, let, him, let him freak the fuck out. Go ahead and do your thing, Andy, and then Scala, take that from the top whenever he's done with his thing. There are these four really big Eternals that participated in the invasion. These undead gods from another world. Two of them were just, like, disintegrated completely. But two of them were incapacitated. A great ibis-headed god and a cobra-headed oh, god. And you think, you think that, like... That might fit the bill, if you'll pardon the pun. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> uh, no one will pardon the pun, it seems. Ah, well, it would appear that not only is the sheer volume of corpses presenting us with an ill tiding, but this may be an undead god. It was part of the invasion, if I remember correctly. This cannot be reanimated. We would be in grave danger. The fact that we are so close to Stonehaven concerns me. What do you mean, a god? Something... Beyond the rest of the Eternals. Something far more powerful. This may not be the only one. I have no way of knowing if the other one is housed here as well, but even one is plenty dangerous. Clark, as Illipel is recounting all this information to you, you remember that it was something of a point of pride after the invasion that this bird god was knocked out of the sky by, is it ingenuity? Yeah, we had something to do with that. What did we do? <laughs> Shot a big bolt of lightning at it from the top of Nivix. Blew its arm off. It was very dramatic. Oh. Is that something I would have had any involvement with? <laughs> <laughs> Not you personally. A fascinating tale. Terrifying one. I'd hate to think what would happen if that thing should rise again. What concerns me, Alwyn, is that it's so close to Stonehaven. Aye, if our suspicions are correct... And the threat has not yet passed this evening. I fear leaving is the wrong choice, but we must warn them the moment we can. That thing wakes up. I think what it does to Stonehaven is going to be the least of our concerns. You could very well be right. Very good. And from here, your party can take a short rest as you wait for whatever comes next. Would I have a sense of how long we've been down here? After this short rest, I'll say maybe four hours? Okay. So kind of halfway through the night. I think there is an adequate reason to fear what stirs behind that wooden barricade. But I believe that we can overcome whatever it is, or better yet, stop it from happening at all. We've done so much already. With that, I will just prepare a song of rest, and Hell yeah. I'm going to use a hit die for sure. Very good. Man, bards rule. Can I go ahead and ritually cast Animal Messenger again as part of our short rest? Yeah, absolutely. I sort of say to Illipel, Well, I don't think it wise we leave ourselves. I may be able to send the message in our stead and I'll sort of find some small beast of the earth. You see a little mute wriggling through the dirt. I sort of reach out to it. Aye, you'll do. I'm a lizard. Aye, a good one. It's not Vim the Vigorous? <laughs> not this time, but... Lizard noises. I look down to this creature and I say, We found a sleeping god from the invasion within this vault we're guarding. If they're to take it, more than Stonehaven will be in danger. Okay. You send this message on its way. And as this short rest comes to a close, could everyone make me a perception check? 13. 21. 21 as well. All of you hear loud, padding footsteps coming down the tunnel. Sounds like round two. I don't see a reason why we don't just hide again. Oi. Uh, go ahead and roll me stealth, everyone. Unfortunately, might be a poor use of my last, more powerful spell. I'm afraid we won't have the shadows working for us this time. Uh, you can say that again. Oh, no. We shall do our best. I rolled a 14. Three. Dirty 20. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to pass, but the fact that like, it doesn't matter. Clerk's fucking it up for all of us. He's going to sit there in the open. He's fiddling with his fucking key ring. Thinking about <laughs> sausage dogs or whatever. You hear a groan of wood cracking and of metal twisting. And with a loud 
bang, the door nearby you is flung off its hinges Uh into the room. Wait, like, as if whatever it was was, like, invisible or something? There doesn't seem to be anyone standing beside it, if you'd like to take a peek down the tunnel. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna entity and take a peek. Okay. That's a nat 20. This is what you see. You see, by the light of your dancing lights, a large blue-plated lion-like creature with a pointed scorpion's tail striding down the corridor and mounted upon it another blue skeleton in a fine robe extending a hand towards the door. Everyone roll initiative. Is this an eternal riding a manticore? Yes, it is. Holy fuck, that's cool. 14. That's a 21 on a natural 19. Dirty 20. Owen, you see this vizier psychically knock this door down. You're up first in initiative. What do you do? Oi, that's more like it. I'm gonna, maybe against my better judgment here, I'm gonna run up and attack. Okay. Which creature are you attacking? I'm gonna see if I can get close enough to attack the mage. Okay. Yeah, sure. First hit. Um, that's a 15. 15 is the vizier's AC. So that's going to be 12 bludgeoning and 2 necrotic. Okay. Needs to make a concentration check. He does succeed at his concentration check to maintain focus on telekinesis. Ah, interesting. Um, Okay, so as I swing first with the gavel, I'm going to swing now with the mallet. And that's going to be a another 15. Yep. And this is going to be three bludgeoning and five necrotic. Okay. It seems to take somewhat less damage from the non-magical weapon. That's my turn. Okay. Illipel, you're up. Fairy fire, manticore. Hell fairy yeah. fire, the manticore. Dex save. I'll probably hit both, won't it? Oh, yeah. We will hit both. Both of them make a saving throw. Both of them fail. The highest Hell being 13. Hell, yeah. Cool. Uh, so they are both illumined by this fairy fire. Now the vizier goes. Alwyn, could you make me a strength saving throw, please? Oh, um, sure. Strength save. Okay, okay. That's a nat 20. For a total Come on. Ah, uh, you're no fun. Man, when I need it from the blue dice, the blue dice gives it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, excuse me. This is not a saving throw. It's a check. Oh. So the vizier gets to oppose this. The DC is going to be 21. Oh, that is a 21. The vizier is going to roll his spellcasting ability. Does not succeed. You feel as if you are trying to be telekinetically hoisted into the air and away from this vizier. Oh, wild. But... He does not do so. You see in my entity state, the thorns and vines around my legs and cloak dig into the ground and hold me in place. And that is going to be his turn. Then the manticore goes. And you are right there and it's... Yeah, yeah, I am. Manticore face. So it's going to make three attacks against you. (sighs) Okay. Yo. It's savage jaws open and it attempts to bite you. 16 plus 5. It's for sure. Yep, so you take 4 points of piercing damage, the absolute minimum. Okay. It's sharp claws rake at you. 11 to hit will not succeed. Misses. And it's jagged scorpion tail comes swinging at you. 13 will not hit. You'll have to do better than that. We go now to Clork. All right, I'm going to blast it with Chaos Bolt. Okay. The uh, Manticore. Very good. 14 to hit. 14 is the Manticore's AC. So go ahead and roll your Chaos Bolt damage. All right. Here we go. Well, that's going to be seven fire damage. Okay. Not a good roll. It does take all of it, though. This leonine creature growls and singes as this chaotic entity burns away at its Lazatep flesh. That's Clork. Back to the top, Alwyn. I'm going to keep swinging. Okay. That's a dirty 20. You hit. That's going to be seven bludgeoning and three necrotic. Passes his concentration check. That's my bonus action. I'm going to think about casting a spell, but I'm just going to swing it again. Okay. 
That's a 24. 24 will hit. That's five bludgeoning, two necrotic. Okay. Maintains concentration. Okay. Illipel, you're up. Yeah, I'm going to use catapult. I'm going to try and throw one of the eternal corpses in the vault (laughs) at this thing. (laughs) Oh, fuck. Okay. You do this. You lift the eternal corpse off the ground, and you suddenly feel your connection to this magic disappear (gasps) as the vizier casts counter spell and counters your spell. Oh, shit. Hold on. Can we... uh, Just some quick rules of adjudication. Is that what counter spell does? Counter spell counters a spell? Yes. Weird. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. (laughs) I'll allow it. It's fine. (laughs) Feels bad, doesn't it? It feels not fun. Yeah, now you know how I feel against Andromeda. Cool. As my bonus action, I will just use a level 2 spell. Okay. Okay, I, 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 wanted, to, so I wanted to see your reaction, that's all. Uh, that's my what? turn. I mean, like, there's some second level spells that you can cast as bonus action, but you... Oh, there probably are. I don't have any of them. I don't have them. You could give somebody Bardic Inspiration. No, they're not going to fucking use it. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, down a, I'm down a charge or two here. I'm not... No, I'm not doing it. Okay. If I miss, it's your fault. It literally isn't. All right, fine. You f- <laughs> pull my arm. Fine. All right, hold on. Cloak, I find myself deeply wanting to inspire you once again. Please. Do they, though? Aim that cloak bolt true. I feel so inspired. Then off with it. Cut it out! Both of you! Come on! <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Both monsters have to have their turns first. Yeah, both monsters are about to have their turns. The vizier. It's gonna make a con save, please. Oh, shit. Okay. Ten is not gonna do it. Six necrotic damage from the halo of spores. Okay. Uh, the vizier is going to reach out and touch you. Okay. I don't consent to this. Uh... Yeah, great. <laughs> great. <laughs> God fucking damn it. These dice. You hate to see it. Yeah, whiffs. Four plus not enough. Well, if only this guy had a bardic inspiration. Hmm, yeah, or, you know, it sounds like your dice did a counter spell on you. <laughs> okay. Jeppy, one day you'll play a caster with counter spell and you'll, you'll know that wonderful feeling of blue magic. Okay, here come <laughs> three manticore attacks. Okay. Dirty 20 on the bite. Yeah, that hits. Ten points of piercing damage. Okay. Ten on the claw. Nope. Fourteen on the sting. Got to do better than that. Well, you know, sometimes the dice don't want to break a ten for me, but that's good for you guys. Clark, you're up. Okay. Is Fairy Fire still up? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to let loose another Chaos Bolt. This Manticore. And I don't need the Bardic right now because that's going to be a twenty to hit. Absolutely hits. 17 thunder damage. Uh, with a deafening crack, this manticore reels again. Nice. Starts to look at you, Clark, with a bit of distaste. Ooh, I'm gonna hide as a bonus action. Good choice. It's a 19. Okay. You appear to be well hidden. Alwyn, back to you. Okay, let's go again. I'm gonna keep hitting the eternal. Okay. That is a nat 20 because of the advantage. Yep. So, doubling these dice. Ooh, that's some good rolls. That's going to be 13 bludgeoning and 8 necrotic. Yeah, this vizier looking very injured. I'm going to take my second attack. That's going to be a 19. Vizier is going to use a shield as a reaction on this. Illipel, we're over to you. I will also attack the vizier... Okay. That is a 22. Hits. Okie dokie. And that is an additional nine piercing damage. Oh, you the pill, that's the way. Okay. Its hardened coating does seem to make it resistant, but uh, it does appear barely alive. Unalive. <laughs> okay. It's the vizier's turn. It's got- Please make me a constitution saving throw. Yep. Also, did it make one for concentration before? Oh, no, it didn't. Um, succeeds. Okay. It loses concentration on telekinesis as Illipel strikes it. 
Dope. And it makes a con save uh, 15. Does 15. 15 pass? Yeah, 15 is the DC. Okay. It shrugs off your spores. It utters something in a tongue from beyond the stars. Uh-oh. And a mass of writhing tentacles spring from the ground. These ink treaders, black tentacles grasp and grab at you lot. Both of you make me a dexterity save. 23. 16. You're not restrained by these tentacles. Now the manticore just attacks. As I'm reading this, they stay in the area though? Correct. They stay in the area. Alwyn, it's coming at you. All right. Bite misses with a 7. <laughs> Claw hits with a 21. Yep. For 6 points of slashing damage. Just broke through the temporary hit points. Uh huh. 23 hits on the sting. Certainly does. Make me a con save, please. Yeah, okay, here we go. As you take 10 piercing damage. Oh, shit. Con save. That is going to be a 17. Okay, that will pass. You take half of 24 poison damage, so 12. Holy shit. Woo! As the sting of this manticore sends shocks of pain through your body. Oh, I'm shocked in pain. No, actually, it. I'm going to seriously say, uh... Oh, I certainly don't feel so good. Because now I'm actually really hurt. Clark, we're over to you. You are hidden. All right, Clark's going to swing big. We're going to do a twinned second level chaos bolt. Very cool. Targeting both of them. You do have advantage on these rolls. Right, so that's two different attack rolls. Oh my god. Jimmy, come on. Throw all your dice out. I'm literally using different dice, like, all the time. All right. Did you use the Bardic Inspiration? I didn't yet. Hold on. Because it might not even help. Uh, I just want to say that this first one is against the Manticore. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be 12 to hit. A 12 will not hit. I shouldn't have wasted that Bardic. Oh, that's with the... I should have lied. Jimmy, come on. Uh, I rolled a 3 and a 4. Jimmy. All right. That's rough. All right, so here's the other attack. Against the Vizier, what do you get? Against the Vizier? That's a 17 to hit. 17 will hit. Okay. All right. Here we go. Ah! Okay. Will you allow this? Is it going to jump? It is going to jump. I think the ruling I made was, if it's twinned, you can't have it jump to something that's already been targeted by a Chaos Bolt this round. Right. No double dipping. Okay. Why? Well, technically, you can't twin a spell that is capable of targeting more than one creature. And so we're already bending by allowing me to twin Chaos Bolt. Oh, because twin spell is single target and Chaos Bolt is weird. Yeah, I'm allowing it to happen with that caveat. Got it. Right. So it was already alms for the poor for Jimmy and it didn't even go well. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. Roll your damage. I did roll my damage. That's the problem. That's why we're having this conversation. Uh, that's 10 cold damage. Do you want to, like, kill this vizier in any special way? Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to end his sad, miserable life on life? Uh, yeah, sure. So I, like I always do, point my wrench at this thing, and it looks like that is not going to hit it, and then it just kind of suddenly at the last second curves to actually hit him, and as this chaos bolt hits him, ice creeps along his body, and he shatters and collapses into shards of ice. Awesome. Very cool. (laughs) Very cool. You were a very bad spellcaster, Lazatep Vizier. I'm ashamed (laughs) of you. (laughs) Didn't grab anyone with your black tentacles. Didn't telekinetically throw anyone. I hate you. Got killed by Clork. <laughs> Alwyn, you're up. Okay, let's go. Taking swings at this manacore. Still fairy fired? Yes. That's a 19. Hits. That's six bludgeoning and six necrotic. Okay. Swing it again. Oh, a four and a six for a total of 13. Misses, unfortunately. Okay. Bummer. Illipel, we are over to you. I'm just gonna just gonna attack. Okay. Manticore. Oh fuck! I forgot to heal. Oh no. Oh boy. This manticore could get the last laugh on me. Uh oh. We'll get you up. If it's looking injured at all, just go for it. Don't hold back. I'll be fine. That's a 16 to hit. That will hit. Seven piercing damage. Okay. Now it is the manticore's turn. Um. Unless you would like to make use of the bonus action. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use unsettling words as a reverse bardic inspiration against the manticore. 
Okay, so the next time it saves, you roll a die and it subtracts that from its save. I thought it was any roll, I can just use a d6 against it. I was under the impression that it's a saving throw. Let me take a look. And is there any stipulation that you need to share a language? Next saving throw. Yeah, it's just next save it makes before the start of your next turn. Nothing about language. Okay, cool. Your creepy words transcend the language barrier. (laughs) These lessons in Rosetta Stone have proven quite... No, um... <laughs> Sponsored by Rosetta yeah, Stone. Yeah, exactly. Now you can get a... No, uh, um. Need to learn Elfish for your next LARP. What would I say to a fucking man? I, I mean, it doesn't matter the words you choose. It's more about how you say them. Your end approaches. I, I just say some shit like that. Hell yeah. So edgy. All right. Halo time. Okay, it got a 14. Already fails. That's max damage, eight necrotic damage. That's okay. Halo pierces through it. Cool. It doesn't like that. Uh-oh. 18 to hit on the bite. Hits. For five points of piercing damage. Okay. 15 to hit on the claw. Just hits. AC 15. For seven slashing damage. Okay. 24 to hit on the tail. Absolutely hits. There's no way I'm not going down. <laughs> I have three hit points left. Okay. You take six points of piercing damage. Okay. Down. Make me a constitution saving throw. Okay. It's going to be a 12. The DC is 13. Yikes. Okay. It's a lot of fucking dice I just heard. What's your max hit points? Without the entity additional, it's 41. Okay, you simply fail a death saving throw. Okay. Clark, we are over to you. Clark is looking back and forth between Alwyn and the Manticore. I will help him fell this beast. You really think I can do that? You have a lot of faith in me. I've always believed in you. And <laughs> one more bardic inspiration. It's not, not your, your turn. turn. Oh, wait, it's not my turn. I can't do that. Oh, man. How much flavor that would have been. Well, uh, you're on your own, fucker. I don't know what to say. <laughs> 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 well, I'll pretend I have Bardic. All right, here we go. My last spell slot. Well, it's going to be a Chaos Bolt against the Manticore. All right. Here it goes. And it still has Fairy Fire up? Correct. Sorcerer cast Chaos Bolt. It's an 11. 16. Hits. Yeah, it does. Hell yeah. Get his ass. Oh. Here we go. That's 11 fire damage. Okay. This Manticore looking very wounded. Oh, would four more damage have done it? No. Okay. Can I... Do you want to use your Fury of the Small? I do. Never used Fury of the Small. Okay, cool. Fifteen fire damage. It is closer to death. As we go to Alwyn, please make a death saving throw. Oh, no. There's a one in 20 chance I die right here, guys. Shit. Five percent chance you die. Here we go. That is a seven. Okay, you fail another death saving throw, but you are still clinging to life. What barely fucking bleeding out in a pile of my own spores. Casting healing word. Healing word, healing word, healing word. Oh wait, healing word's a bonus action. Fuck yeah. Correct. Yeah, we're gonna do that. It's gonna be seven healing to you. (gasps) Hit it with the sword. Yeah, I I planned to, Clark. Thank you. Okay. Alright, so with the 18 I hit, and I will do Ooh, maximum damage, well piercing damage. Because of Fury of the Small. Hell yeah! Hello, fellow, would you like to add some flourish to this killing blow? Sure, so I will throw out my healing word to Alwyn, and then I will run up with my rapier and get under the manticore and just stab up through its chin and up into its skull. Make a dex save for me. No, no. 19. As you stab the manticore, it sort of slumps forward, but you're able to deftly pirouette and stand before it as it falls dead onto the ground. Okay. And we'll exit initiative there. Oh, oh. once again, Elopel, I would not be alive if it weren't for your words. Well done. Anything for a friend. Elopel, as this fight concludes, you hear a voice in your mind, a very familiar voice. I suggest you leave a little something behind so I can find this place. And you think that's the greatest idea you've ever had. What the fuck? 
you really want to just leave a marker in this chamber before you go. All right, I'm going to try something, and I don't think you're going to allow me to do it. What are you going to do? I'm going to try and cast Suggestion on myself. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) I want to see where this goes. Go ahead. Can half-elves be charmed? Yes, I believe so. I have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. That's a 13, and I presume, let's just say I get... Is it technically a charm? Suggestion is a charm effect. Okay, then I technically get advantage. The other roll was a 4, plus 2 is 6, so I would fail this roll. Okay, what are you suggesting to yourself? I would suggest that I keep this power as we move forward. Okay. You suggest that to yourself. You think that's also a very good idea. You still feel like the greatest idea you've ever had is to leave some token behind so this place can be found. Wow. Do I see Elpel over there talking to themselves? (laughs) Starting to sweat. (laughs) Roll perception? Well, I got a 26. (laughs) Okay, yeah, you you hear Elpel muttering to themselves. The Illipel would probably be staring back at that vault and looking down at their person, kind of repeatedly. Illipel, what are you doing? Illipel will raise up their hand, kind of like, uh, leave me alone, leave me my thoughts, stop, stop, stop. Clearly very unable to focus on anything other than what they're staring at. I'll, like, look towards what they're staring at. Okay, uh, Illipel will shake their head and say, it was nothing, it was nothing. Uh, let, let us be on. And I will slowly take my ring off and just drop it on the ground. You attempt to pull it off. It is fused to your flesh. Uh, oh, what's wrong? It's fine. It's nothing. It's it's nothing. All right, I guess I'll just drop a zib. They've convinced me it's a good idea, but I'm not going to give them more than they need. Okay. Roll me sleight of hand as you do this. 19. Okay. You slip a zib into the cavern full of eternalized corpses. Two things. One, would the vizier have left any remains, any robes, weapons, relics? He does seem to have a fine robe. There's a dagger on his belt, a spellbook in a language completely alien to this world. Hmm. I mean, I'll take all of it. I'm not going to worry about casting detect magic right now, but I get the sense that all of this kind of looks pretty high quality. Yeah, and again... If you weren't on the run from the law right now, there is a finder's fee for anyone who is selling things from other worlds. I mean, I already didn't want to sell the Kopesh to Azorius. I'm not going to fucking sell any of this stuff either. (laughs) Yeah, there might be a black market for it as well if you wanted to take some time perhaps to seek it out. Secondly, I do kind of go to Clark and I'm like, Clark, there's something wrong with the Lapel. I didn't notice a difference. And can I roll something else like insight or or anything you can roll insight or perception are you guys gonna make any attempt to repair the door well now that you ask probably should yeah we've seen clerk use mending before right mending yeah but anyways yeah i'm gonna roll insight because i alwyn has tried every possible time to trust illipel but cannot Mm -hmm. on insight that's a 17 plus 7 24 total just real quick i feel like alwyn would make a great suburban stay-at-home dad just getting in all the neighbors fucking business all the time he's got to be rolling in sight and perception doesn't know you know he's got to get in there Lapel roll deception for me please oh wow for the first time fucking ever you beat me i got a 22 yeah and right at the most valuable time too you see Lapel shaking their head and scrunching up their face you think that something might be exerting some sort of mental influence over them. Illipel, I don't know. What do you keep trying to hide from us? And I would think that all the way down here, you would respect your friends enough to be honest with us. You said there's nothing wrong, but I know that's clearly not true. It is not out of disrespect that I say it. And it's not inherently a lie, either. I simply don't know what is wrong. There's no use in putting fear in all of your minds. This is my burden for now. Let it be my burden. I see how it is. Very well. And Alwyn will still keep an eye on them, but otherwise just help Clark fix the door. Okay. With your combination of spells, you can replace the door without issue, and the rest of your watch passes uneventfully. You think that perhaps this was the extent of the forces 
set against this vault. Couple buddies just fixing a door. You guys are resting outside this vault. Is Illipel asleep? That's up to Illipel. We took a long rest? You were about to take a long rest, I believe. I mean, yeah, that's what we do when we rest. Okay. Alan, did, did you want to wake me up and talk about something? I sort of gruffly wake Illipel up in the middle of the night. Okay. Our conversation's not done yet. Wake up. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you too. What would you like to discuss? When you invited me back to your Violet Rose, you told me very plainly, perhaps the most plain you'd ever said anything to me, that if you were going to become a problem for this outfit, that I shouldn't hesitate to end that problem. I don't have an investigative mind, Illipel, but I see you playing with that ring. I see you pacing back and forth around that vault door. I see you talking to people who aren't there. I'm perceptive, but I don't know why you're doing these things. Is this a problem that we have to put an end to? It shouldn't have to be your burden. I can't say in a promise to you that it's not a problem or that it won't become one, but I'd like to think it's one that I can handle on my own. DM, will you remind me how big the Kopesh is? Is it a one-handed weapon or a two-handed weapon? It's a one-handed weapon. Okay. From beneath my cloak, after they finish saying that, I draw the Kopesh. And running it along my hand, I say, I think we both know that's the last warning you're going to get, little pal. I don't want to hurt you, and I know you don't want to hurt us, but I think we're at a point where that's not up to either one of us anymore. Are you threatening me? I sort of look out past the darkness towards the vault. No. No, I'm just assuring a friend that a promise is a promise. May I see the blade? And I hold out my hand. I'll give it. Okay. And DM, if you will allow me, I would like to attempt to cut my finger off. (laughs) Holy shit! Okay, let's end here. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato, that's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.